wrestling fanatics, welcome to the Queen's Takeover. Thank you for joining us as we take over the podcast world. It's your girl Kat, aka the Texas Sport Queen. We also have the Carolina Boss Lady Kayla. Hello. And our resident adjuster, Jolie. Sup. And it's towards the end of August, which means the biggest party of the summer, which means SummerSlam weekend is upon us. So we have predictions galore for both SummerSlam and NXT TakeOver 30, and it is a lot to get into. But before we do all that, uh, just want to hit some royal recaps real quick. So, Kayla, what stood out to you this week? Um, honestly, what really stood out to me this week um, would definitely how Seth Rollins and, and Dominic Mysterio went down. Uh, the I was not expecting that. Um, so hopefully he can get some upper he can get some upper hand on that one because that kind of kind of made me flinch a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to jump to SmackDown. Um, Braun and Alexa. I did oh, not see. That. <laughs> I just <sighs> why WWE why. They were my favorite mixed match challenge tag team. Why? But, um, yeah, I just, no, I'm lost for words right now. (laughs) I just, but no, those are the two that basically caught my eye and attention. And so, yeah. yeah. It's like, who knew that Braun would be on the verge of turning heel, or so it seems, and Alexa possibly be teaming up with the Fiend. I don't know. I kind of have a feeling that's where it's going, but we'll see what happens. Jolie, what stick out? What stick out for you? All right. Well, let's start with Raw. We're gonna go with um, the showing out of Bianca Belair versus Zelina Vega. I thought that was a great match between both of them. Mm-hmm. NXT. Um, I will be perfectly honest with everybody. Um, it is hockey season. I am a Flyers fan, and it was hockey that night. So I did a lot of channel surfing, but the call out uh, with all right. So the um, the flaming folder with Keith Lee, Scarlet, and Karrion Cross was definitely a highlight. And then I'm gonna have to go with Oscar winning <laughs> on SmackDown. And again, Tamina, Tamina showing out or not Tamina showing out, um, (laughs) Bianca Belair showing out on Tamina with that spear. That spear was fantastic. Oh yeah. The Bronco type buster bomb from Tegan to Asuka was definitely amazing. Um, Liv Morgan getting uh, a debt repaid to her. Via Ruby Riot, who sacrificed herself. Somebody posted it back to back where Liv pushed Ruby out of the way and got kicked onto a table and through a table. And this time it was Liv getting pushed out of the way by Ruby when I guess it was, was it both Iconics kicking them? Or just oh, yeah. Kate? Oh, yeah, I think it was both. After they all got eliminated, they were, like, uh, squabbing on the outside. Yeah, but but Ruby pushed Liv out of the way when Peyton went to kick her off. I think so, yeah. And then just Asuka winning that in the fashion that she did and landing on top of Sasha and Bailey on the outside. <laughs> um, that was great. That was definitely, like, uh, again, a highlight the wild card to the entire thing is this re- retribution storyline. Mm-hmm. And it was different people. And one of the people has been identified um, via her hair, Jesse Kaimea. Next yeah. time, don't take a picture of your highlights, dear. Yeah. So she has definitely been labeled as one of them. And I have a feeling that... Um, Casey Catanzaro is a part of the group as well. What? The small girl walking on top of the car? Come oh, yeah. Now. Okay, okay, okay. Makes sense. And I didn't see them in the audience that night. 
Actually, yeah. I haven't seen them in the audience. Shati, I understood because she was in it. And can we talk about the awe moment of the week of her getting her helmet back? Thank God. I swear, whoever stole that car is a piece of shit anyway. But luckily well, they, she was able to get... They didn't really... They just stole it and drove it around and left. I think they, they said not much was stolen out of it at all. Yeah. So it was probably just somebody, a kid being stupid. Mm-hmm. But it's like, you really need to find you somebody that looks at you like Shotzi looks at that helmet. It's like my heart broke. It's like she was fine with the gear and the car and everything like that. But it's like the helmet meant so much to her. And it's like Jake Atlas that when, uh, went and took her to get it and everything. It was just, that just kind of broke, it, it was warming to see. But it yeah. kind of broke my heart that it happened to begin with. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, Kathleen Cross, that fireball was Hero ouch. of the week? Huh? The, there's there's a hero of the week. Oh, who? The, the, the hero of the week is whoever sent Instagram a warning about Lana and Rusev's picture and it got taken off because it was considered <laughs> pornographic. <laughs> oh my god. That one in the beach? Yes. That got oh. taken off. <laughs> because that they is... said it was like it was um there was discriminate or something like it was just done uh, something like pornographic or something like that. And oh she's like what you guys are racist? I'm like, what the hell? They said it was pornographic. You dumb! Oh my god! Because you talked about having sex to be, you know. And I'm sorry to get off tangent, but if your parents both have COVID, why the fuck are you flying anywhere? Yeah, good. Yeah, good point. All right, I apologize for getting in your way. No worries, no worries, no worries. Yeah, Lee and Cross that whole segment stood out it's like this whole storyline with and of course we're going to get get into predictions for his match but it's like that, this whole storyline has brought brought out like a different side to Keith Lee I haven't seen yet and I have a feeling that if Miss Scarlett keeps getting in uh involved in this and everything she's going to be making her in-ring debut very soon because Mia's going to want a piece of her ass oh man and then on Monday with the whole Dominic and Seth Rollins and everything. Um, he's done. He, yeah, Seth is, I know he's trying to stick in character and everything with the lashes, but I tell you one thing that I was not expecting that he did. He is pissed off every fucking Latino superstar because all I saw on Dominic's Twitter page and everything was like twi- uh, tweets from Andrade Santos Escobar, Lince, all of them just like supporting him and stuff like that. We got your back, Vida La Raza, and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, Seth, you've got a major problem, my friend. And y'all are right, and like Bianca like showed out this week, and oh, it was just absolutely. It, it, one thing that happened is this, this, this happened after we recorded the last podcast. But can we talk about her going to Zelina's house? I know that was like last Saturday and everything, but <laughs> damn. Bro, bro. Like, I, I will say this about the women of the WWE. And it's something that they do better than the men in the WWE. They know how to keep a storyline going. Mm-hmm. Um, the Zelina Vega going, getting her ass whooped in her own house by Bianca was fantastic. You have... Mercedes Martinez and Rhea Ripley going at it. You you have right now Asuka going after Sasha and Bailey on Twitter, which is fantastic. And I know that, you know, people are getting tired of hearing her name. That's why they're so glad she's off TV. But you have to look back and say that this a lot has to do with how Becky Lynch played the storyline leading up to the main event at WrestleMania 35. She played the media, especially social media, so well. And I feel that a lot of these superstars took cues from her on how to prolong feuds and do feuds, um, especially in the age of social media. So, you know, I know she's living a 
monk lifestyle because of the not so fans out there. But we miss you, Becky, and thank you for teaching the women how to do a proper social media feud. You're muted, cat. You're muted. <laughs> I don't. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry. For once, Hello. it was cat, not Kayla. Shut up! Yay! <laughs> All right, ladies, let's get into it. NXT TakeOver Saturday. So far, there's only four matches that have been um, put on card and made official. Who knows? They may make another one Wednesday night. We'll see. All right, so I'm going to start off with an easy one. Uh, Dakota Kai facing a very pissed-off Io Shirai for the NXT Women's Championship. The promo... Oh, EO's promos, I swear, I, I'm loving them even more and more. But, um, so, oh, Kayla, who do you got? Isn't it obvious? Um, I believe the, the Tokyo Shock is definitely strong. So, Dakota Kai needs to bring everything she's got to get into the mind of EO Shirai. So, I hate to say it, Dakota, as far as a heel... Has kind of, kind of grown on me a little bit. I kind of like the little heel factor that she's going through, right? But I hate to say it, um, there is not enough combat that Dakota can bring that's going to prepare her for Io Shirai. So Io Shirai is going to retain. Alrighty, Joey. The self-proclaimed captain of Team Kick is going to join her ex-teammates on the L side of the bench. The genius of the sky, Io Shirai, will re- get her revenge. And it's going to be very nice. And like you said, Kayla, I love her heel turn. And she did kind of allude to the fact that she is no longer working with Raquel Gonzalez. So she doesn't have that factor anymore. Um, so, yeah, it's. I think it's either way it's going to be a banger of a match because... Mm-hmm. The match with Tegan and Io was definitely a banger of a match, right? Right there. So, yeah, and it's it's a damn shame, real quick, that they're not Dakota is not working together with Raquel anymore because they actually could have been pretty awesome as tag team champs. Just saying. Now, somebody did bring up something. Well, what if Tegan turned heel? I'm like, no, no more heels. Uh, no, no, no. No, 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 no. All right. Yeah, this is the easy one for me. EO's retaining. Dakota, yeah, you can wait your turn. You can wait. Sorry. Sorry, honey. All righty. So we have the ever growing, even more uh, fiery feud between Pat McAfee and Adam Cole. And these two are actually facing off on Wednesday. So that's going to be wonderful to see. And Pat McAfee has actually been like, on Twitter, he's been doing like little videos from his uh, house and everything. Actually, training and training in the ring, taking some bumps. But yeah, we'll still see how this goes. Uh, Jolie, who do you got? Pat McAfee is going to be undisputedly beaten the fuck up by <laughs> Adam Cole, baby. <laughs> Fucking can't stand him. <sighs> <sighs> All right. All right, Kayla. I'm with Jolie. Can't stand the guy. Go make it short and sweet and to the point. Um, Pat, just go ahead and just pack up and leave because I hate to tell you, Adam Cole's going to win. Yeah, I he can train all he wants. I don't see how he's going to get out of this one with a victory. All right. All right, let's get to the complicated match because it's not yet set in stone yet. So we have the five-man ladder match for the vacant North American title. We know as of now, it's Bronson Reed, Damian Priest, and I cannot believe I'm saying this, Cameron Grimes in the match. So on on Wednesday, we've got two more singles matches to determine the other two spots. So so I want to go ahead and get the predictions for the singles matches out of the way, and then we could do who's ever winning the actual match itself. So, for this first singles match, we have Johnny Gargano and Ridge Holland. Kayla? 
Um, we'll just take a stab at it. I think Johnny Gargano is going to be the one that wins that one. All righty. Jolie? I see them pushing a lot more of the newer people, but Ridge is way too new. Um, so, yeah, I got to go with Johnny on this one. Yeah, it's like... I mean, because it's like Bronson's in it. Can't, oh, why Cameron? Jesus, I would take a Kushida over Cameron. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but I got to go Gargano as, as well. All right, so the other singles match, and this one's going to be a little bit more uh, in the depth discussion and everything because One Velvet Between Dream has returned. And so since he was not pinned in the triple threat match, he will actually be going against Finn Balor for the fifth and final spot. So I got to break up this question. Jolie, what did you think about his return? And two, who do you think is going to win between him and Finn? I'm going to start with the who I think is going to win. I believe that Finn Balor um, is going, should win um, on to why is because of the fact that Right now, wrestling Twitter, the internet wrestling community, wrestling fans across the globe are really up in arms about this because they haven't posted anything. They haven't said there's any police reports, anything like that. WWE has been very, very hush-hush when it comes to the situation with Mr. Patrick Clark Jr., a.k.a. Velveteen Dream. Mm -hmm. Now, I am indifferent. Because the accuser has deleted their Twitter, deleted their Instagram. Somebody has screen caps of them saying that they made everything up. Now, this is just one accuser. I, But there's also the screen caps from somebody else. So it's very hard to determine what's going on. Right. So... To play devil's advocate, if the police were involved and they found him innocent, I don't, I think maybe for all parties involved, they just didn't want to keep dredging it and they decided not to say anything. Or WWE just, the other, the other flip side is that the people are going to think WWE doesn't care. I am, was a fan of Dream until all this started coming out, but then I guess I just, you know, uh, it's it's such a fucking double-edged sword. It really is mm-hmm. because I like the guy. I think he's a great in-ring athlete. But at the same time, if this is true, then he, he can't be in the ring. But at the other, on the other side of the coin is like, well, if he's innocent, let him be in the ring while he's being investigated. I mean, he's been out since April, right? April, May? He's been out for a while. Yeah. Something like that, I think. So he's early June, early June, because when okay. they had that takeover. All right, so all right, so me, but still, it's been almost two, three months. Mm-hmm. So he's been off, and that's plenty of time for the police to investigate, because somebody said this went to the police as well, from what I've been reading. Okay, but it's just. It's very, very, it's a very, very touchy subject. The speak out movement, you know, miraculously pops up and then disappears again, pops up, disappears again. You've got people attacking Dream, but there you got Justin Roberts accused of the exact same thing. Sitting on AEW's TV screens. Um... So it's it's a very double edged sword, and either it doesn't matter what WWE does; they're damned if they do, if they're damned if they don't. When it comes to Velveteen Dream, so if they want to at least save face, Finn Balor needs to be the one that wins. I agree. I totally, I totally agree, and everything. And there needs definitely needs to be some kind of closure with this, one way or another, or else the internet community is just going to keep up at arms about it. Kayla? Um, as far as Dream returning, um, I am going to agree. I do like his talent and his athletic ism in the ring. 
Um, but I've never really been a big fan of his. So in a way, it kind of didn't bother me that he wasn't on NXT. Sorry, dude. Uh, <laughs> but um, I will say this. Finn Balor should be able to beat him because if WWE lets Finn lose again, they will get a ve- very highly opinionated article from the Carolina boss lady. And you don't want to make her mad. So trust me. <laughs> so no, Finn, you do not. <laughs> Kayla, I hate to break it to you, but if they haven't paid any attention to your Mojo Needs merch shirts... Uh, <laughs> why are you going to go there? <laughs> oh, why are you going to go there, Jolie? <laughs> <laughs> because well, I'm half asleep. <laughs> well, I will say this. It's kind of interesting. I think somebody has been glancing at my articles because there's a few things that I've written like about the 24-7 championship, and then all of a sudden it happens, like buried talent. It's like I will talk about certain people, and like the next thing, they pop up on TV. So, I mean, I don't know if they are, but hey, I mean, I don't know. Maybe Mojo Brawley will finally get a shirt when he gets inducted to the Hall of Fame about 40 years down the line. Who knows? <laughs> At this rate, it's going to be about 40 years. <laughs> Oh my god, Pearl. All right, so let's say that Finn gets into it, Johnny gets into it, along with Cameron, Damian Priest, and Bronson Reed. Let's go with those five as our final five. Kayla, who's the new new North American champion? That's the toughie because, honestly, I cannot believe I'm saying this as well. Um, In my opinion, everybody in that match would be very, very well disturbing, uh, deserving for it. Um, except for maybe chalkboard screeching Cameron Grimes. Uh, say. <laughs> um, but even if he won it, I mean, I give him kudos because, you know, look what he had to go to get there. So um, uh, if I really seriously would choose out of all of that, I'm going to be up in the air if it's that match. Um, I would be perfectly fine if Brunson Reed won. Maybe even Damian Priest or Finn Balor. So I really don't know who I could go with because I kind of like those three the best out of everybody. So thank God we're not putting bets on this, or else you'd be like out like triple on that. <laughs> you'd be having to shell out some money, but you could get some back too. Who knows? <laughs> Jolly. All right, so those five. Johnny doesn't deserve it um, as much as I like Mr. Annoying Boy right now. I mean, I prefer him as a face than a heel because he's just a whiny bitch as a heel. And that's the worst kind of heel. The only one that can actually <laughs> pull off. No, I'm serious. The only one that can actually pull off whiny bitch heel well is Seth Rollins. When he was a part of the authority, he was a whiny bitch. Yes, he was. That was one of his best performances. Um, honestly, I would love Finn to win it because of the fact that he has been getting... He's been doing his best to put people over, and I actually kind of love that about him because he he likes putting over the newer talent, the younger talent. Um, Damien definitely deserves it. Uh, my heart goes to Thick Boy. I love Bronson. Um, he would be my dark horse to win it. And um, Captain Caveman can go back to um, the Neanderthal era through the closet of Narnia and just get the hell out of our screens. Now, see, what, here's, here's the sad thing is when he first came up, when he was doing that, um, I guess it was like kind of like the, the male version that they were having for like the Mae Young. Like, not Mae Young, but it was like they had like a kind of like a male version of that in NXT, like some of the new guys that we didn't really know about. I, oh, liked, yeah. I liked him then. But now he's become a freaking caveman, and it's just like, uh, no. I mean, there's some things when it comes to to hair that just bothers me. I mean, some guys can pull it off. Yeah. Killian Dane is one of them. Um, Seth Rollins actually is better with the hair, but him, he just reminds me of a wet rodent. <laughs> Like a sewer rat or a musk a muskrat. That's what I'm thinking about. A muskrat, like coming out of like the bayou or some shit like that. Yeah, you know, and he's like with his teeth and everything. Like, just... <laughs> so um, 
the one I want to really win it is Finn Balor. My dark horse is Bronson Reed. And Cameron Grimes can go back to the bottom of the pit where he belongs. Get, Get lost, boy. Get lost. Speaking of Killian Day, why the hell would they put him in a match with Drake Maverick? It's like, what are you trying to do? Kill the, kill Drake? Come on. That's I know. I thought I got broken up by Yui, but it's just like, damn. I saw that and I was like, wait, no, no. Oh man. All right. So yeah, my first choice would be Finn for Finn to win, and 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 I love. I think you you tweeted you tweeted it or you uh, said it on one of our chats the other day about Finn actually going after Jericho a little bit. Oh my God, that was epic. Because <laughs> you know you had Jericho the previous the following day with the whole demo god bullshit, and I fucking found it hilarious because Big Brother posted something that like completely void because like I think they had like a one point something in demo. Mm-hmm. So and it's just like what the hell? I didn't know that was even possible. To go above oh, above oh, the one, but yeah, no, uh, the the eighteen, the third, uh, the forty nine, or the the six. I I was dying. The fact that you know Finn has no fucks left to give and thinks that Jericho, you know, the way I felt that he, I felt that he was feeling disrespected, mm-hmm. and he's like, well, you know what, fuck you, and um, hey Jericho, see, whenever you go against the women, you lose. So, yeah, just remember that. The women will constantly kick your COVID ass. <laughs> oh, man. And I'm not surprised about Big Brother because I'm a Big Brother fan. I've been waiting for it to come back on TV, and I'm so happy now. So, anyways, well, that's another story. But, I mean, well, of course people are going to be interested in this one. It's the freaking All-Star. And you got Janelle and Kesar back, which are probably two of the best – Big Brother players in history. I know we're getting off topic, but Rachel and Brendan destroyed it for me. I can't watch that show without having those flashbacks. Um, <laughs> those but, are crazy. But um, I was always a fan of Janelle and Kesar, so you know, as long as they keep doing what they're doing, uh, that uh, Jericho is not going to be the demo god on Wednesday nights. No. Hell, that's something I can even do for uh, pop culture department is like stuff on Big Brother. <laughs> All right, back to TakeOver. Okay, so Finn would be my first choice to win. If I have to do a second or a dark horse and everything, it would definitely be Damien Priest. He's grown on me, and I I think he's actually come came into his own ever since he had that match with uh, Finn at TakeOver in your house. And so he would be perfectly fine with me as North American champion. All right, so main event. Karrion Cross gets got his wish. He's getting an NXT title shot against Keith Lee. I'm gonna tell y'all now, I do not see this ending clean, and I see this as a trilogy. But Jolie, what do you think? Um I agree. Do not see it ending clean. I don't even see it ending in a pinfall submission. I see it either being a double DQ or count out. So, either way, it's touch base on something that you said earlier about Scarlet. Uh, I honestly feel like um, if Scarlet interferes at the TakeOver match, Mia will get involved. All right. Yeah, it's like poor thing you had to do a, do a match after getting back in the hospital and everything. But, yeah, it's like I see those <laughs> I see those two intertwining down the line. All right, Kayla. Hold on, hold on. But the funny thing. I watch um, Dakota Kai's stream when she t- streams video games. And she was streaming with um, Mia, Jessamine, and Shayna. And I could hear Mia in the background talking to her chat about Keith. Saying, no, he's okay. He, he, she was keeping up the storyline on her stream. And I was cracking up. Because like, you saw the girl. You saw like them cracking up too. <laughs> but it's just like, you know, I thought that was like really uh, like I like that she tries to keep the storyline. All right, Kayla. Um, I I'm actually had the same thing Jolie said. Uh, either double count out, no disqualif- uh, disqualification, maybe not even end, you know, eventually just call it off. Um, I don't know. Part of me basically does see this going because, like I said, I don't see Keith losing it anytime soon. I don't see WWE bringing Cross in and just flat out bury him in a clean win so um 
like you said at the beginning of this, I definitely see this probably a trilogy is going to go on because, uh, like I said, it's not just going to happen because eventually Scarlet's going to get involved. We're going to get Mia stepped in and then that's going to build up and that's when eventually, I guess you will say, boom, boom, bang. Okay, here's your new champ carrying across. So, but anyway, it's going to, it's going to take a while. Um, but I eventually do think he will become champion, but at TakeOver, Keith Lee's going to retain either by double count out, no in, whatever. It, it, it's not going to be pinned by submission. There we go. No, <laughs> no, no pinfall, no submission. Uh, Lee's walking away with a title, but no, this is like no pinfall, no submission, nothing, nothing like that. Because it's like, this is not a one and done. Because especially, especially after what happened Wednesday. No. Hell no. All right. But no, I was going to say this about Carrie and storyline. And mm-hmm. something I've noticed that they've been doing with both him and Mercedes Martinez. They're making them out to be beasts. And, mm-hmm. but Danny Burchill gave him one hell of a fight. Like he oh, wasn't, yeah. a, it wasn't, they aren't making him bury competitors. Like he's getting decent fights out of the match and i think that's something that like you know we i haven't seen that in wwe in a long ass time and hell i have never seen it in aew right i mean look at what um cody's been doing like you know all these people coming in and do we honestly think that he's not going to drop the title to Brody lee are they going to bury Brody lee after you know all his get up I mean, I actually already heard a spoiler about that. Oh, I know. And you know what? <laughs> I think there's a lot of NXT fans that are being very respectful, mm-hmm. even though a certain jackass <laughs> who decided to play a concert in Sturgis, South Dakota, jackass, um, decided to spoil the Keith Lee match. Yeah, I, I think a lot of uh, people are not being dicks like Jericho was, and I respect that about him. But yeah. tell me, the, but tell me the spoilers when we're off air. I don't I give will. a shit. <laughs> You're gonna love this one. All right, so all right, SummerSlam. So this match actually just got made on Friday. Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville, hair versus hair, and when it's a grudge match, it's it's. When it's a grudge match, it's even more juicy. And I can already tell you, based on the comparisons that people have been doing online, the mock-up comparisons with both of them bald, being bald and everything, it works more for Sonya. And Mandy's do a win against her. She owes Sonya an ass-beating in the ring. So I'm actually going to go ahead and go Mandy on this one. Kayla? Um, as much as I love that Sonya Deville is on her own and, you know, basically trying to, you know, get her name out there because that's what I wanted. Um, but my prediction, she deserves it. Mandy Rose. All right. Jolie? This is really hard for me because, you know, Sonya is a, a sister, you know, LGBTQ. We all stick together. But um, I, I kind of want to see what she looks like with that short hair. Uh, so I got to go Mandy with this one as well, but only because I think Sonya was going to completely fucking rock the short hair. And honestly, from the mock that I've seen online, she actually does rock it. It works completely for her. It does not work for Mandy. It works completely for Sonya. So I, that's why it's like, that's why altogether I'm really seeing Sonya winning this one. Alrighty. So we got U.S. title match, Apollo Crews defending against MVP. And, of course, when we, you hear MVP, you know he's going to have her business there with him, being Lashley and Shelton Benjamin. But, Jolie? Um, I hope and pray that Apollo retains. But I see the... Um, I'm trying to be nice. <sighs> the two giant golems outside the ring that, you know, follow MVP like he's the, the precious... And, um, yeah, uh, I have a feeling that they're going to get involved. But hopefully, you know, Apollo has some backup that will come help him out as well. So, um, you know, Ali, if you're listening, I-, I-, I will bake you cookies if you help out Apollo Creed on Apollo Cruz. Sorry, Apollo Cruz, uh, SummerSlam. Uh, 
I was fixing to say, when is the jester ever nice? Uh, t- I'm trying. <laughs> uh, she is a wonderful person, ladies and gentlemen, but I have to give her grief every once in a while because it's the jester. We love her. <laughs> All right, Kayla, who do you got? I want to agree with the jester herself and say I pray and hope that Apollo can retain. So, um, Apollo, please retain. And I don't care if you got to go track down Ali, Ricochet, um, Vince McMahon, or somebody. Get you some backup out there. Cedric. What I, well, Cedric can be out there, too. So, uh, just bring backup. I don't care who it is. Uh because, like I said, you got the uh, there's two Satchquatches out in the ring that's going to be out there. So, um, but yes, like uh, we have stated, Apollo, you need to retain, buddy. Please, please. Thank you. <laughs> hell, hell, Mary, full of grace, let Apollo attain. Next. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. All right. So, the Raw Tag Team Championships, we got the Street Profits. Defending against Andrade and Angel Garza. Hopefully Montez is good to go. Um, and he's recovered and everything. And you know Zelina's going to be there. And if she oversteps, Bianca will be not too far behind her. Kayla, who do you got? Uh, Don't you dare. I, I see that face. Don't you dare. I've, I've bit my tongue. I've bit my tongue multiple times. But I've been watching the storylines and seeing how everything's going. Um, as much as I would love for the Street Profits to retain, I will love them because they, you know, they've really, um, became one of my favorite tag teams. I, I just, when I get this vibe, I get this vibe and I hate to say it, but I'm going to go with my instinct. I really hate to say it, but I have this feeling that Andrade and Angel Garza is going to be in the new champions. I don't know why I don't want it to happen, but I, when I get that vibe, I just go for it. But please let me be wrong. <laughs> That's the last. That's my prediction, but I want to be wrong. <laughs> it's like your heart's telling you Street Profits, but your head's telling you Andrade and Garza. Yeah, because if you watch the storylines, they've basically been buried quite a few times. And you know how it normally goes. Once they mm-hmm. get they lost an opportunity multiple times, they get another stab at it. They're going to end up being champs. But my prediction is Andrade and Angel Garza. But I pray that I'm wrong. Because <laughs> I really want the smoke to retain, please. There you go. <laughs> All right, Jolie? Um, I can see Kayla's point of view. Uh, it hurts to say that that could actually happen. Mm-hmm. However, you know, I am going to say, oh, God Almighty, I, I'm I'm here for the smoke, but I, I I agree. I feel that Angel Garza and Andrade are going to retain uh, to win the Raw Tag Team Champions Championship. But I feel that this will be a good thing because it'll give a little bit more life to the tag division, which is kind of needed. So I'm gonna go uh. go throw up now for saying that. Amen, sister. Amen. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I, I think I'm going to have to agree and everything. It's like my heart wants the Street Profits to retain and everything, but yeah, it's like they've had them since like way before Mania, so technically, they are the longest reigning Raw Tag Team Champions. Props to them, but yeah, I think it's time, we, it's time for the switch. Alright. So, we talked about this one earlier, but now it's the first... Now, let's actually officially predict this. Seth Rollins, Dominic Mysterio, which we now know it will be a street fight. So, Jolie, who's winning? I have a feeling that Dominic is actually going to pick up the win with it being a street fight. Um, I mean, after the brutal beating that he received, I don't think Dominic's going to be coming alone. I Mm-mm. think he's going to have people showing up and beating the fuck out of everybody. <laughs> so I, I honestly feel that this is um, 
I honestly feel that he deserves the win. I mean, it's it's a great match, especially for a green competitor um, of Do- like Dominic is. Uh, you know, so he can use weapons, and he apparently he knows how to take a beating with a kendo stick. And as somebody who has been hit with one of those, they really do fucking hurt. Um, I have one myself, and sword fight with them like we would practice, and yeah, they didn't hit me as hard as that, but they hurt like a bitch. So props to Dominic for getting his stomach and back looking like fucking chopped liver. Like I, I, I am very impressed that he was able to to stand just to get all that those pictures taken care of. So yeah, my prediction is the Monday night man bun. He gets put on the shelf a couple months early for paternity leave. I don't know. Please. <laughs> God. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. I think Dominic's going to pull out the win on this one. It's, yeah, it's like, it's like I said earlier, it's like you said just now, he's not going to be coming alone. Uh, and so, yeah, it's like, bye bye, Seth. Dominic's going to send you home to Iowa. <sighs> Kayla. Um, like you two basically said, um, Dominic's not going to come alone. Um, he's going to have his backup, just like Seth's going to have his puppy dog, Murphy, mm-hmm. um, and probably some others. I don't know. We haven't really seen Austin Theory, so I don't know if that was the case. This might be something for um, Seth might try to bring in AOP or some other reinforcements. So um, I believe Dominic Mysterio is going to get the win to get revenge of what he did to Ray and his family. Okay. All righty. So, Jolie brought this up earlier because of what happened on Friday. Miss Asuka, the Empress of Tomorrow, is going to have a busy night on SummerSlam because she's going after both the Raw and SmackDown Women's Championships. They need to make this a winner to take off, but they probably will not. So, we've got Asuka versus Sasha, Asuka versus Bailey, Kayla, what's going to happen? Asuka versus Sasha Banks for the Raw Women's Championship. I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say Asuka will become the new Raw Women's Champion. Jump to SmackDown. Yeah. Bailey is either going to retain by DQ or Countout. So, and so I'm predicting Asuka's going to win the Raw Women's Championship back. Bailey's going to retain the SmackDown. And the reason I'm doing it that way is if you remember on SmackDown, Bailey and Sasha has to defend the women tag team titles at payback. Mm -hmm. Regardless of who it is, I don't know. I have a feeling they're going to lose those titles at payback. That's when Sasha's going to snap at Bayley. And that's when she's eventually going to build up to become the SmackDown Women's Champion. That's how how I'm going with it. So, Raw will be Asuka. Bayley will retain the SmackDown. So, if I'm wrong, then let me be. But that's have a that's how I feel that we're finally going to see the Banks and Bailey divorce that we've been waiting for. Because how else are you going to do it? Because if you have Sasha retain, them retain the titles, and Bailey and Barry Oscar, where, where are they going to break up? So the only one way is dethrone Sasha. Uh, yeah. Defrone Sasha, let Bailey retain, and then let them lose the titles afterwards. So that's how I'm going with it. <laughs> Ooh, very I had a, in-depth and in, I had a, very in-depth analysis there. I had a lot to think about tonight at work. I had plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <sighs> yeah, I mean it's like they haven't announced who they're defending the titles yet at payback. They're probably gonna have a contenders match this week or something like that. Uh, Jolie, I'm gonna let you go because I'm still kind of not sure on this one yet either. So I'm actually going with the opposite of what Kat, uh, Kayla just said. Ooh. Only because I do not feel that they are going to actually take the title away from Sasha just yet. So, this is what's going to happen. Bailey's going to come out with her, and Bailey's going to interfere, giving Sasha the win. However, something happens to Sasha where she cannot come out with Bailey. So, Bailey is on her own, and then she loses the title to Asuka because I feel that Asuka literally did get screwed out of the SmackDown title 
and you can't say that she got screwed out of the Raw title because, well, okay, she did get screwed out of the Raw title, but she held it longer than she did the SmackDown title. I feel that it would be more of a, a revenge and justice for Kyrie if she wins the SmackDown title from Bailey. And then due to whatever mystery injury that Sasha got, they will lose the tag titles to my secret team that I want to be in there of a Miss Ruby Riot and Liv Morgan. Because I'd be good with that. I'd be good with that. Because fuck the Iconics with a spork. I'm sick of them. Break those two bitches up. Please. Thank you. Good day. Uh, So yeah, I feel that they're going to lose the titles and Bailey is going to be the one that snaps, um, blaming Sasha for everything, which would make Sasha the face, keep Bailey as the heel, and I think it would work out better in their favor if they did it that way because Bailey hasn't fully been able, she has no um, redeeming characteristics yet, but you see the sympathetic side for. Sasha with Bailey saying that, you know, I really wasn't, I really didn't have anything to fight for um, on Monday night. If I have the title, I, I'm, I'm going to fight harder. So it's kind of like a, a subtle stab towards Sasha. So that is where I'm leaning. And it's like, yeah, there's like, I heard like those reports and everything that Vince has actually been extremely high on Bailey's heel character and how she's doing right now on TV and everything. So I really don't see that ending anytime soon. And so Jolie does make some damn good points. All I know is Asuka's walking away with one of the titles. It should be a winner take all, but it's not. But I know she's walking away with one of those titles. And uh, unfortunately, I will just leave it in that because because it's like I'm torn I'm, I'm a Sasha fan I don't want to see her lose another title soon and everything like that and the divorce is coming either way so she's walking away with one she's walking away with Oscar's one away, walking away with one of the titles alrighty so we have the Universal Championship The Fiend versus Braun Strowman which has gotten even more creepier uh, because of Alexa's involvement and, and Braun turning like completely sideways now. And so this has gotten strange and this is going to be a very heated match. So, Jolie, who do you have? Honestly, I think that The Fiend should win the title back, um, even though this has actually been some of Braun's best mic work. So I'm actually kind of torn because of the fact that, you know, Braun is Braun. And I've always kind of liked that character. But somebody posted something on Twitter the other day, and it just made my head explode with the, can you just imagine the Fiend standing up from a, a, a Randy Orton punt like when for, for Survivor Series? Oh, yeah. So when he goes to punt him, then the Fiend just pops back up after he gets punted. I, I kind of was like, that was kind of like, ooh. Like one of those, you ever have like one of those, like those mints that make your whole body chill? Yeah, that was the kind of like that, that was the feeling that I got all nice and tingly. Yeah. And then I'm thinking, <laughs> and then I'm thinking, okay, well, if that's the case, then Carrion needs to win the NXT title eventually before SummerSlam or uh, Survivor Series because that match would just be 100% epic. But we're getting way too off in the fall. But it was just, that was what made me think like, I kind of want to see the Fiend win again because I like how his character has constantly developed. And it's like, what is he now? Is he a face? Is he a, a tweener? What what is what is he? So it's like I like the enigma wrapped in a riddle, wrapped in a quandary, because it's just it's just that's what he does. And that's what makes me bray more because of the fact that one, he has full I think he's they said he has full control over the fiend and the storyline, which you know completely blows people's minds that he does that. And oh, side note: apparently, Sonya Deville has complete control of her storyline as well. I did read that, and I'm I'm actually happy. I'm actually happy on that one. Oh, I'm I'm ecstatic that this is that they're getting um like control of their storylines because it, it goes to say, well, you know, all the it 
it's all Vince. It's all Vince. Well, no, I don't think it's all Vince anymore. No, and that's actually a good thing and everything. Give give the reins over to them and everything. And it's like this is like it's like you said earlier. This is like some some of Sonya's best work now. And, and this is like the really the first time she's been able to like kind of break out on her own. That's why in regards to their storyline and Kayla, I'll get to you in a second, I promise. But it's like in regards to their storyline, it's like that's why I've been so torn about this because I've always wanted to see Sonya break out her own. But in regards to the storyline, of course, I'm Mandy. I'm on with Mandy and Otis. I was with Otis and everything. So, man. All right, oh, so. yeah, d- definitely. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. All right, Kayla. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, I'm just going to do a funny prediction for the heck of it. Um, I know 100% this will probably not happen. Um, but just as a fun prediction, The Fiend will win and become the new Universal Champion. And Otis will cash in money in the bank and become champion. That would be the ballsiest <laughs> thing he could ever do. That would be He's so ballsy. Will it happen? Probably not. I'm just saying. I'm just going with the fun. The Fiend will win, but Otis... Let me phrase this. The Fiend will win. Otis is going to try to cash in the money in the bank. If he wins, he wins. If he don't, he don't. But either way, I think Otis is going to try. Not necessarily might succeed, but like I said, I think he might try. I mean, honestly, and this is kind of a side note and everything, because Big E's doing like a whole singles run and everything, I honestly think that... Otis needs to put up the briefcase against Big E. Big, Big E wins. He gets money in the bank, and then that way he can go after the title. I would be that would actually be best case scenario. Because mm-hmm. it's like I love Otis to death and everything. I don't think he he shouldn't have won to begin with. That, that that whole thing that whole thing was like sideways, anyways. <sighs> All right. So prediction for this match. Yes, this has been like the craziest that Braun's been, but I do see the thing. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, I do see uh, the Fiend gaining the title. All right, so last match, WWE Championship, Drew McIntyre defends against Randy Orton. Number one, I'm. <laughs> it's funny to see Randy Orton playing with dolls, action figures on his uh, on his time off and everything, because he just did a video of him predicting his match. And number two, why are they why are they serving him up another legend? I mean, I know this is gonna like uh, drop after Monday night, but it's like HBK two. Come on, shit, that's enough. That's enough already. <sighs> but yeah, it's like Drew McIntyre defending against Randy Orton. Kayla, who do you have? Um, as much as I am a fan of Randy Orton, I've always have been from the very beginning. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing him become a 14 time champion, but, um, I'm really very happy with Drew McIntyre, how he is dominating at the top of the division right now. Um, so I'm going to go Mr. Claymore himself, Drew McIntyre retains. Alrighty. Jolie? I am torn as well. I am a fan of evil Randy. Um, and to side note as to why they're giving him another legend, I have a feeling that this is leading to a possible uh, grudge match with Triple H. Because I, I feel like that's like a match that needs to happen. Like basically the teacher beats the student and the student beats the teacher. So that kind of thing. But yeah, HBK shouldn't be getting in the ring. But Randy is actually a very safe worker. I mean, he did that whole punt with Rick very, very well because we didn't see it. And it sounded like he kicked his head off. It honestly did. Um, But I'm torn because I would love him to win the title. I love Drew. But I, I don't know how I feel. The fans there, it's very hard to gauge how Drew's doing as a champion. We can see how he's doing on the internet. Uh, with Reddit, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, we can see how well he's doing there. But without the fans, you can't really gauge anything. So I think um, what they should do is have this match end via disqualification, which leads to a rematch. Maybe not at payback because that's just effing crazy. But maybe at the next pay-per-view, which was maybe Hell in the Cell? No, not Hell in the Cell. Um, but whenever the next normal pay-per-view is, 
Um, yeah, I, I have a feeling like it could lead up to like another match. Um, just because they're doing something different now. There's something about fan interaction um, with it moving to the. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's a stadium in Orlando. Amway Center. Thank you. Uh, the Amway Center. It's moving there. And so you're, we're going to get the pyro again. We're going to get an uh, interactive crowd minus whatever Don Hausen is going to be buying apparently a thousand tickets so everybody sees his face on the screen. And if anybody doesn't know who, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but it's the guy that Cody Rhodes played, uh, fought a couple weeks ago. That kid. Um, yeah, he's like, yeah, I'm going to buy like a hundred thousand tickets. So all they're going to see is my face. And I started cracking up at that. Don Hausen, D A N H. A U S E N, the guy that Cody faced a couple weeks ago for the uh, title. Or, or, or oh no no, put... it's somebody, someone that works with him, like one oh, of his. Oh okay. Not Dart, not 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 the horse, but the other guy. Oh okay. So I honestly feel that they they should not pull the trigger to end Drew's reign just yet. Like I, I kind of need to see the how the fans do with that. But if they have to pull it, I don't think um, there's anybody on the roster right now that actually could do something with the title other than the Viper, Randy Orton. So either okay. way, it's it, it's going to be a good match. Yeah, especially after, like, Drew's reaction at the end of um, Monday, at, at the end of last Monday's uh, Raw and everything. And this is going to be brutal. Drew's going to get it. He's definitely going to lay into Randy big time and everything. From what I've read, some uh, part of what I've read and everything is, like, they want to take the title off Drew for now and put it back on him later when the fans are back in the audience and stuff like that. So part of me thinks that Randy is going to win, even though I, in my heart of hearts, I hope Drew, I hope Drew retains. And it's like you said, everything, everything's uh, for SummerSlam, and I don't, I don't know about Takeover yet or NXT, but um, but SummerSlam and. The Raw and SmackDown, they're definitely moving to the Amway Center, and so that's definitely going to be a wonderful sight to see. <gasps> oh, yeah, no, it's, it's definitely going to be a lot better. Like, I mean, I, I just have a feeling it's going to give us a little bit more sense of normalcy, mm-hmm. and I know they aren't letting fans in yet, unlike AEW, and I don't give a shit what anybody fucking says, especially that little um, Jesse the Buckeye, who said, like, yeah. you know, we're we're not fans. You're fucking fans. You're in there making signs. You're in there watching a live wrestling event. Nobody who's not a fan of wrestling doesn't go to a wrestling event. Yes, they had to find somebody who had connections, but still, you were wrestling fans at a wrestling event. And if you get COVID, I don't feel sorry for you. I really fucking don't. And honestly... I'm very surprised she was even there because she even announced herself. I'm not following her, but I saw this on Twitter. Uh, it's like she even announced herself. She's actually pregnant. Yeah, so I think that was very um, irresponsible and idiotic on her part. And now I get it. They were very social distanced, but I mean, some of the spots weren't. I mean, there's people wearing their masks under their nose. And it's just like, but why? Um yeah, so that really annoyed the hell out of me. Like, they're saying, well, they're not fans because they need to have non-wrestling connections. But it it, it was some back-ass wayward thing that they, they said it. And it's just like, dude, just fucking say that you let in a thousand fans and they could sit spread out. I mean, stop trying to, like, you know, be a douche about it. I mean, seriously, and I know I really haven't talked much tonight because one, I'm tired and two, I'm tired, but it's like when I saw that, it honestly pissed me the fuck off and, you know, AEW just let go of like five or six wrestlers. One of them definitely given Mm -hmm. that was Jimmy Havoc. The other one was a definitely given, and that was Bria Presley. And, um, you know, you had Jericho saying, well, I hope Bia comes back once everything is over. And I'm thinking, she helped her husband ha- bury a rape and then blackballed the rape victim. 
that woman doesn't deserve to wrestle anywhere. Mm-mm. But, you know, again, it's a double fucking, everything's a double fucking standard. And, you know, people bitch about Vince, about wanting fans. Yet AEW has done it this entire fucking time. They, you know, originally they weren't fans, but, you know, that's what they said. They weren't fans, but like, there's little kids in the audience. They're fucking fans. I'm sorry. When when you see Sammy Guevara getting chased down in a golf cart, and there's two little kids with their hands held by their dad. They're wrestling fans. So you know, like I'm just I'm just so sick of all the leniency that AEW gets. But did WWE is the um, shit show? And I got to admit, the past three weeks for no the last four SmackDowns have been very good, and the past three Raws have been very good. So it's like they're they're getting better and it's just but here's the thing. And everybody's like, well, you know, the ratings, the ratings, the ratings. You are going to not have the same type of response to any sporting event. Mm-hmm. Basketball. Raw beat the Lakers. <laughs> Nobody talks about that. Raw yeah. beat the Raw beat the Lakers. They couldn't even break a million views. Basketball <laughs> couldn't. So there is, sports right now is going to take a hit regardless because there's something about watching a sporting event with the fans there that makes you feel like you're there. But when there's no fans and, and they pipe, it does kind of like, you're like, I, I don't feel like watching this. And it's one thing I love watching the Phillies games. I mean, I mean I'm bringing up baseball and bring up Phillies, but it's like <laughs> they have people outside the stadium they just show up and they're cheering they brought a drum line like the fans are doing what they can to make the players feel at home and they were really pissing off the yankees uh because the air horn and the yankees coach was trying to get the guys to actually get rid of the people with the air horns <laughs> like, the, like the the philly staff and um they're like, uh, yeah, no, that's Philly property. <laughs> oh, man. Anything to get under the Yankee skin, I'm all for it. And it's like, I just actually saw this uh, tweet online and everything. Mickey James wants to, wants a reunion with Melina and to go after the women's tag team titles. I'm for it. Everybody loves m and <laughs> I saw that tweet, too. And that's what she said. That's what Mickey said underneath that. I was like, everybody loves M and M's. Like, I, I I could dig it. I I would love to see them. Trish and Lita. Um, be definitely. All right. What well, What are you laughing at, Kayla? No. Well, I was listening to you all. I I haven't watched AEW yet, so I was looking at the um results. Jericho wasted no time and covered orange by freshly squeak kicked out. They exchanged forearms and it goes in and says, this is the biggest win of Orange Cassidy's career. Hell yeah, Orange. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, apparently he um, he did win the match on Wednesday. I haven't, I haven't finished watching it yet either and everything, but it was kind of a botch on the roll up and everything, but he did oh, get the well, win. Oh, he still won. Hi! Did you do that? Hear me just say that. <laughs> Uh, can, um, if we're if we're talking about botches, can we talk about the four count with Mike Chioda? Right. And, <laughs> now, you know what? I'm I'm happy that Mike is back working, but I'm gonna yeah. say this, and it it might annoy the people, but I'm loving the fact that there are so many refs, so many refs of color and women. Like mm-hmm. I'm enjoying the fact that there's, it's a it's a very wide range in cornucopia. And um, can we get Shanna Baszler versus uh, Sonya Deville in Raw Underground, please? Thank ooh, you. Ooh. Yes, please. Ooh, I, 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 I'll start a poll on that myself. <laughs> oh, apparently oh. With, with Raw Underground, the internet wrestling snowflakes sent letters saying that the dancing girls were too much. That's why we didn't have the dancing naked girls this week. Oh. Dancers need money too, bitch. But Liv Morgan wants them back. Oh, oh, I love that. Liv, like, lives all for it. I think even she went after Medusa with what Medusa said. Yeah. Or a hell, bit, like, hell, it's like, I, I know dancers need money and everything. I live in Houston, and there's, like, apparently 
like a, a drive through strip strip club now. How the fuck does that work? <laughs> do, do they do they hop up on your hood and give your like windshield an ass wax? I think what the what I saw on the what I saw on the uh, pictures and everything is like they set up big tents and. It's like they have the girls on the side, and literally people just drive through. It's like yeah. drive through slowly, creep in, get a little bit of a show, throw some dollars out, and then drive on out. And go back yeah. in line. <laughs> go check it out, cat, or something. I'm just kidding. Hell no! <laughs> Hell no. Not my cup of tea. <laughs> Send your husband. <laughs> just do it for the podcast. That's all I would say here. Just do it for the podcast. Speak no, no more. No, just... do, it, do it for everyday sports fans. We we, we must know for pop culture. <laughs> oh, if I know of anybody in my family or my circle who's interested, I'll tell. Hey, I need you to go check this out and let me know what happened. What 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 it is? <laughs> Here's a GoPro. Just film it. Just just film it. <laughs> yeah, that's a hell of a research assignment. <sighs> all right. So, so if there's anybody listening from the Houston area, please go through one of these, record it, and send it to Cat. <laughs> yeah, it's like send it to me at Texas Sports Queen or send it to the podcast at QT Bow Down. <laughs> All righty. Well, you you touched on it, Jolie. We kind of touched on it a little bit. So next week, since we kind of have like a lull week between pay per views and st- the predictions and pay per view results, we're actually going to get into a topic that's kind of been all over on all of our minds, the toxicity online with the wrestling community. So yeah, we need to get this out on the air finally. Yeah. It, it's not just the wrestling fans. It's also the wrestlers themselves and the owners. It's been something that's been irking the hell out of me. And like, I've been trying not to go after Cody because I respect him. I've been trying not to go after Brandy because I respect her. But for fuck's sake, if Triple H, Steph, Shane, Vince did any of the shit that Tony, Cody, Kenny, Brandy, the Bucks, Jericho, Matt Hardy ever did, or what, whatever they do, like they would be fucking destroyed. And it the, the double standard needs to get televised, and it's going to get podcasticized next week. And just we just hope you join us for it. All right, so that's all we have for this week's edition of Queen's Takeover. Thank you so much for joining us, and tune in next time as the takeover continues. Y'all have a good one.